That's a very good reply. And a first look. He's in a bit of trouble here, Mark Williams. Can't see anything down the right hand side. Pink and black is blocking that off. And the two reds that are on the left hand side are blocking the path back to the bulk area, so he's in a spot of bother here. I don't know if he can come off there and just land on that red. The middle pocket may be in the way, but that is a possible escape route. But as I said, the middle pocket might just be in the way of him landing on that one. Now, if he plays that, he's going to, well, you would think, screw back and maybe try and get it in off the other. That's, that's an ambitious one, John. Yeah, I don't think uh, he can play the, the drop on the red. I think middle pocket is in the way. It's certainly very close to being in the way. He could play this one and screw right back into the book area and take a chance on where the red's going. Straight screw back. Well, that'll work. Well. <laughs> yes, he did make it a big pocket, but uh, I think he was concerned more about the safety shot there. There's quite a few balls moved. Have a look at this. Three. Look at the action that we got on the cue ball. Well, there's no doubt he's on a red here, but this is quite tricky to get back anywhere for a colour. Cannoning into the other balls is the problem. Yeah, it wasn't the best position of shot there when he potted the yellow. And he had a, quite a margin for error. And he was never going to get round the back of that. And Four. Well, he can see enough of the green. That is very, very risky. And he can see enough of the pink. It will go down past the black. That's also risky. And he'll be kicking himself here because... When he did knock that red in, he must have thought this was a great opportunity. Now all he can do is try and play a containing safety shot. Yeah, the yellow was a pretty poor shot. Have a look at this here now. It was a fairly comfortable pot, but if he comes across the table, well, he's got another 12, 18 inches. That end of break. Part with his foot. Well, why we're in the pulse mood? Let's have another question for you. There it is. Who will win the World Championship? Ronnie O'Sullivan, Mark Williams, or another? And don't forget, it's bbc.co.uk forward slash. And don't forget it, the pulse. It's snooker after forward slash. a serious mistake nowhere near the pot and consequently nowhere near the safety he thought that was a shot to nothing much too thin with the pot and consequently cannon the red could be a very big mistake yes and a very big turning point in this match for the Welshman because the mid-session intervals coming up and this is a great chance for Ronnie O'Sullivan here one. Ronnie checks straight away to see what the situation with the black spot will be. Two reds just to the left of it. And of course, he can get position on the top red there a little later in Eight. this break. And that will open the spot up again. So this is a great chance. Nine.
50. Well, if he's got an angle, ideally he'd like to stun down for that top red of the two to the left of the black. Like that. Has he hit the cue ball hard enough? 22. Yeah, maybe just another fraction. It would have been just a, a, a roll in and just nestle on the other red. Need to finish just that little bit awkward for him. But he's doing the right thing because we've seen him before change his mind while he was down in the shot. Always better to get up and then back down again. Twice. Could have been better. Not easy to continue. Needs a good pop and he needs to get a good cue ball. There's the pot. Left with a tough long red. 29. Just shows you when you're making a break, Dennis, that one little shot there on the pink where he needed to stun down and get the right angle in the red. And he's had a lot more to do here. Big shot coming up. Third. Just about okay. He stopped on his tracks there. He thought he was going to run. Right on to the pink. But a good recovery shot, the previous one. Uh, he's looking good, I mean. No one forced errors. Cured beautifully. <coughs> 37. Yes, and on the other occasion, he's needed to use his long game. That's looking better as well. It was the only thing missing from his performance in the Masters. His long game didn't seem to be there. But it's been looking better in this match. 44. 45. Let's have a look at what the result was to our pulse question. There it is. Who will win the world championship? 52. Sullivan Williams or another. 48% go for Ronnie O'Sullivan. 47% for another. I think our public must have known that the form 53. Ronnie was in, he was going to win this frame and they were anticipating that when they voted John, they don't miss a trick, do they? You know, Dennis, this has been an excellent break. I mean, it's been tricky, the balls haven't been great. We lost position a few 59. shots ago, recovered it. And playing shots left-handed. Middle of it. Had a little bit of everything this break. Top quality. Six. That last shot. You know, it's so useful to be able to switch hands and, and pop that type of ball. Fifty-nine ahead. There's only fifty-one on the table. He didn't get the cannon as he anticipated, but he can just roll this in, and Mark will go to the mid-session interval. That's in. Sixty-eight. So a very high standard in these four frames. <laughs> yes, they are, John. <laughs> so one in there from again from Ronnie O'Sullivan. That's a beautiful break of 75. He must be delighted the way he's queuing. And he goes to the mid-session interval, please, leading 11-9.
Well, Ronnie O'Sullivan looks just in razor-sharp form now, Ken. He does, and he's sort of uh, compounding every mistake that Mark Williams has made. Uh, you know, we talked about the last frame, yeah. the crucial black that he missed. Uh, but again, he's made another fantastic break. Balls all over the place. Uh, but he really made a lovely break there, kept the white on a string. And just have a look at this. Now, he needs the pink and one more red here. He plays it with the left hand, and it's such an advantage for him. I mean, he looks so natural, even left-handed. And then, of course, you know, he's only 51 ahead, still 59 on the table. But have a look at this. Left hand again. And these pockets that we talked about all week, they're not easy. They're very tight. But have a look at this. You get a perfect view of O'Sullivan. Left-handed. Everything looks and so clean from him. Everything is very clean. It's a pressure shot, but he's playing it with his left hand, and it's, it's just straight in the pocket. And it's such a gift and a talent that the boy has to be able to play like that. Mm. And not only play left-handed, but play pressure shots left-handed. Yeah. It's fantastic. Well, apart from playing at this year's World Championship in Sheffield, Ronnie O'Sullivan has also been busy talent spotting. For his walk-on song, Ronnie O'Sullivan has chosen a track called Stellify. It's an appropriate choice given that The Rocket's been involved recently in a project to turn a talented young British player into a star. Lewis Hargreaves, Joel Walker, Zach Barton, Jordan Lumet, Sean O'Sullivan, Dawson McCann, Jimmy Clark, Jake Stewart. The Ronnie O'Sullivan Future Stars of Snooker reached its conclusion on Friday here in the Q Zone. Eight youngsters went head to head in a competition designed to test their skills. The Elite Eight had been whittled down from around 1,000 under 16s who took part in a series of regional heats. I've always wanted to do something involving snooker and, 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 and see what talent is out there. You know, there's some really good, good youngsters here today, so, um, you know, um, could be a possible couple of world champions in there. The winner was 16-year-old Joel Walker from Sheffield. He caught Ronnie's eye with his complete clearance during one of the tasks. His award was not only a cheque for £5,000, but also something that money can't buy. Joel will be mentored by Ronnie over the forthcoming years. I loved him a few practice games because uh, the way he was potting them balls there, you know, I'd have my work cut out. It's just nice to, you know, just watch him how he, how he progresses now and just be there as a, as a bit of support, really. As in when he needs me. I mean, some come to the end of my career, but I just enjoy playing and, you know, if you can pass something on to the youngsters, I think it's important. When I was younger, that's what I relied on was professionals playing and giving me their time and, and I was able to suck up all the, you know, the experience and, and, and learn from them. And I think, you know, if, um, if, if, he, if he wants to come and practice for me and, you know, I'm, I'm more than, well, happy to do that with him. Hopefully it'll be good and we can become, like, good friends and practice together and help me improve and become, help me to become number one. Really. The teenager was introduced to the Crucible crowd before Friday night's session of snooker, where Ronnie presented him with his cheque and trophy. So keep an eye out for Joel Walk in the future. Now to one of the ties of the second round between Stephen Hendry and Mark Selby, which actually began yesterday. And of course, the winner will play either Ronnie O'Sullivan or Mark Williams. Well, Stephen Hendry, this is a big tournament for him. Age now 41, time ticking by, ranked number 10 in the world. He lost to Sean Murphy in the quarterfinals last year, despite a 147 in that match. He's won.